How does competition affect a business? We're gonna answer that great question in this video. Okay, let's rock and roll. Let's talk about it. How does competition affect a business? Well, I'll tell you what, it can affect it either good or bad, depending on what the circumstances are and how you look at it. But listen up, you're gonna to wanna to hear all of this video because there's a lot to think about. There's a lot of things to consider when you're thinking about competition. And my question is, are you right now going through a conundrum? Are you going through like this, this situation where you're, you're about ready to get into a business and then you've looked around, you've done your research and you say, gosh, there's, there's too many people within that area that I wanna open up my business. Or, gosh, I don't know, this, this, this particular city's been very saturated. This business model's been around for 10 or 20 years, and I don't know if it's gonna be so good or things like that. And I wonder how the three competitors are gonna affect my business. If that's what's going through your head, there's a couple things I want you to consider. Because competition can actually be good and be bad. It just depends on the business, the situation, the model, so many different factors. So let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, okay? So the first thing is, Here's how competition could be actually really good for your business. If there's not a lot of competitors and you have a situation where the business model you're into is a relatively new concept, okay? It's a new idea, uh, a new form of entertainment, or, or like I remember when the electronic cigarette business came out, that was very popular. If you were one of the first of those kind of businesses, having like one competitor isn't necessarily a bad thing, or two competitors. Depends on the size of your city. Are you opening up in like a small town or a major city like LA or Dallas or Chicago or something like that? Are you, which kind of a city are you going into? Because the greater the numbers, the greater the population of a city, the more of that business model it can support, right? It just makes sense because there's more people, so there's more people to serve. But you're, if you're in a small town and there's only like 5,000 or 10,000 people, heck, you probably only have a handful of restaurants and things like that, so your concept might only support one different you know, business model, right? One electronic cigarette store or, or whatever it is. So you have to consider that. But the reason that competition can be really good, if, if you're in that particular situation that I said, is it's a new idea, it's a new concept that's entering market and their customers might end up becoming your customers, right? So I like to say, I'm willing to take on the challenge because I know I'm gonna work extremely hard. I know I'm gonna outwork the competition regardless who they are. I know that whatever, I, whatever they're doing, my customer service is gonna be like 9.9 .9 out of 10. I'm gonna do my very best to reach that 10 and always try to improve and always try to get there. But my customer service is gonna be top notch. So if they're not on their game and they're not working hard every day at pleasing their customers, making them happy and smiling and doing all that jazz, there's gonna be some of those customers that are gonna end up coming over to me and they're gonna say, wow, you treat me a lot nicer. You do this, I, I'm gonna start coming to you from now on, right? And I'm also gonna be competitive on pricing. So I'm gonna have a pretty solid competitive advantage over them, irregardless of whether or not you know, they're, they're doing well or not. And I'm gonna gain some of those customers regardless. So the reason they're good is, heck, they, they, they beat you to market. They're already open, so there's already customers out there. And in a sense, they've allowed you, you know, in a sense, some customers by, by messing up, and that does happen. Like they will screw up and then their, their customers will have an, an, another option to go to, and that's you. And then you've got to hit that out of the park. So when these customers are coming in, you know, you've got to really be on your A game every single day and make sure that you're trying your hardest to please every single customer. I know in life there's no perfection, but if you're aiming for perfection, you're gonna get pretty dang close. So that's one of the biggest positives for me is I utilize a competitor to make me look good. That's my, that's my mentality. So I look at the opposite of what people say. They see competition, they're like, kill. You know, I've gotta, I've gotta run them out. No, I'm like, yeah, let them do their thing. I'm gonna do my thing. I know how I operate. And some of their people, in addition to the people that just come see me, are gonna become my, my, uh, you know, my customers. So also with, with competition, depending on where your competition is at, located geographically, right? Are they in your city? Are they right down the street? I don't recommend, you know, opening, a, a small market right down the street, try to find a different spot, but sometimes that could be the best spot, right? If that's the busiest intersection in your city and you know that if you open up that there's enough money to be made two ways, you know, sometimes that is the best solution, but it's not always advisable to just open up across the street from a competitor. It, it doesn't send a good signal. <laughs> you know, you're gonna have enemies to start with. And also you're gonna have, 
you know, there's only so much of the pie, so much of the money that's there to share. So immediately at best, you're only gonna get so much because they are gonna get some level of customers, right? But another reason that competition can be good and the way it can affect your business in a positive way is that you start network with, networking with these people online, some of your so-called competitors that are in different cities. So they're not really your competition. They might like have websites and things like that, but let's say you're in Kansas City and somebody's in you know Chicago or Atlanta or somewhere like that. Well, I mean, if you've got like an escape room business or you've got an ax throwing business or an electronic cigarette business, most likely there's no competition there, right? You're both in the same business, but you're so far apart throughout the country that it doesn't really matter. So your competition, theoretically, would be some of the best people that you could buddy up with, right? And learn from, and they can learn from you and vice versa. So that's where I see huge positives. So you can have option one, you can view a competitor in a good way and say, by them being in the market, they're helping introducing new customers into what we're buying and selling or the services that we're doing. And it's kind of a collaborative effort, even though you haven't signed a partnership or anything, there is a hidden kind of effort to make people wanna do it. I see that in ax throwing, I see that in escape rooms, right? High tide raises all ships. So everybody's trying here to you know, make escape rooms fun. It's a new form of entertainment. So if they're doing a good job and you're doing a good job, all of those customers are gonna start referring people by word of mouth to both of your businesses because they had such a good time, right? So you want them to actually succeed. You want their escape rooms to be fun and to do well and their ax throwing places to do fun and well because sometimes when their customers are in your area, they're gonna come in thanks to them for actually having a business the first time in the location that customer was at, that customer is now gonna say, oh, I haven't tried this place and ax throwing was fun. I went to that one other place and now I'm gonna come here because they've already done it. They've been introduced to it. So that's when competition can be good. Now, da -doom, da -doom, right? drum roll, let's talk about where competition can be bad, where it can get ugly, right? That's what most people think of, right? And, and one thing, one concept, you've heard this a million times in business, is learn how to look at the glass half full instead of half empty. If you could come from that mentality and that mindset, instead of always viewing competition as a, this threat and this terrible thing and, and I gotta run them out of business, try to flip it. Try to look at them as like your ally. Like, you know what, if that person and that business wasn't here, somebody else would be doing the same thing in the same business, right? So that particular, it's easy to like, look at somebody and say, they're the bad guy. You know, there's my competition. Well, if it's not them, it's somebody else, right? Because the way it works in business is that there's a lot of money in something, the world's gonna talk about it, people are gonna find out about it. It's just the way it always works. And more competition is going to enter the market regardless of whether you like it or not. That's just what happens which is why it's so important to be first to market in any new concept, because you're gonna gobble up all the early dollars, all the money from introducing it, and then as competition enters the business, you know, you're gonna have what's called diminishing returns in most situations where more people open up, you know, and, and so you make less money. That's really what ends up happening. But if you can start viewing competition in a better way, a not so evil way, so to speak, you actually will see so much more light at the end of the tunnel. And I know that's hard to, hard to grasp, it's a tough concept, and some of you might be going, I don't care, I hate that guy, I don't like that guy. Well, you know, I'm telling you, if you can learn how to become buddies, you, some people call it, I've heard the term frenemies, you know, with, with, with somebody, with your competition, where you're actually friends with them, even though you're theoretically enemies or whatever the concept means, that's usually the best route. But here's where competition, this is where it can really affect your business in a negative way, is, when your competition starts really attacking you, right? We've, we've had businesses in the past where they get just so jealous or you know whatever of us that they start every little thing that they can think of, they start calling the city to come and show up at your front door to just aggravate you and do stuff like that, where in most cases there's nothing that happens, it's just like a visit and you explain, okay, yeah, we'll fix that or whatever, and you move on. Another thing too is, depending on the competitor, some people are ruthless, right? So they'll come, they'll see that you're doing well. They'll come into your place. They'll end up, they'll be a customer at first. They'll try to ask you a lot of questions and try to get information. And then what they end up doing is opening up a competing business across the street or down the street or something like that, right? And, and when competition starts opening up like that, it's usually not a good idea, honestly, because again, there's only so much market share, right? There's only so much market share in that area. There's so many dollars only so many dollars maximum that are gonna spend money on that particular business. And the only exception that first comes to mind would probably be like the restaurant industry. 
if you have a specific ethnic type of food, right? So maybe there's five restaurants on a super busy intersection, but there's not a Greek restaurant. Well, that might be a good spot for you to open up like selling euros and stuff like that at a Greek restaurant. But if there's three Italian restaurants serving pasta and macaroni and all that stuff, probably not a good idea to jump in there. I mean, there's already three of them. They're already fighting for it and things like that. And that's when I see competition can really be bad is when people start, you know, got gobbling up, getting greedy and trying to just really fight it out over one area. You know, the world's a huge place. Your state, your city, if you're in a major city, is a big place. There's no reason to have to fight over the same area. Just go somewhere else. Or hey, if they already opened up, they beat you to the punch, just go open up in a different area or don't open up at all. Remember, in most businesses, you're making a long-term decision when you sign up for a business. So the last thing you wanna do is jump in initially and get into a highly competitive market. Why not take an easier route and find a different area? Or maybe try a different business concept that you, you've been entertaining. Maybe you're saying, hey, there's three different ideas I have for a business. This one's just too dang competitive in my city. I mean, they've been around. There's too many of this going on. There's just no reason. I'm gonna try option B or option C. Those are the kind of things that I would suggest. But competition can really affect you in both ways. So to answer the question, how can competition affect a business? It can affect the business in both a positive and a negative way. And I try to take the higher road and I try to view competition as a positive. They're gonna be there regardless. I don't care what business you get into. If there's money in it, you're gonna have competition. That's just the way the world works. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, please like, click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I would love to hear from you if you've got any comments. If there's anything specific you would like me to do for future videos, please put some comments down there. I'd love to hear your feedback. And don't forget, in business, no matter how hard it gets, never give up, keep pushing, and be the hustler.